Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, a simple problem, going back to the basics, round um, thermodynamics, I guess, pressure, a um, bit of physics, but very basic problem. A vertical cylinder containing argon gas is fitted with a piston of 40 kilograms mass and a cross-sectional area of 0.025 meters squared. The atmospheric pressure outside the cylinder is 95 kilopascals, and the local gravitational acceleration is 9.79 meters per second squared. What is the absolute pressure of the argon inside the cylinder? So what is going on here? Let's draw our cylinder with our piston. Uh, there's my cylinder. Let me do a little piston here. And the piston is just a guy that can move. Piston is just a device that you know can move up and down. You know, compress the gas. Um, the gas can expand and it can push the piston out. And the idea, obviously, is that it depends on the pressure coming from the inside and the pressure on the outside, right? And it always finds equilibrium if there's no friction between the piston and the side of the container, whatever that container may be. Okay, so we have argon inside here. You have argon, argon. And let's just do the arc, the arc so I can have more space for myself. And we know the pressure outside, the pressure outside is 95 kilopascals. Okay. Um, we also know the cross-sectional area of this fella here. So the cross-sectional area over here, cross-sectional area is 0 0.025 meters squared. Okay. And we know the mass of this is 40 kilograms. So if it's telling us the mass, right, we can be sure that's a reason because if there's a mass there, that means that we're going to be considering the weight of the piston, right? So the weight, we're going to have... Uh, gravity pulling down on it and that's going to create the force weight but if this were all right if we just had the weight and the outside pressure then this piston would compress to infinity right all the way down but we have argon there and argon is going to fight back right so if we have the argon molecules here we're going to compress them all the way until the pressure is in equilibrium and we have exactly the same well I'll put it inside so it makes more intuitive sense we have exactly the same pressure balancing out this system, right? If it's balancing out, then we reach equilibrium and that piston is not going to go up or down, okay? So, you know, in fancy terms, what we can do is we can do a free body diagram of this guy. I can put it down here and we can look, okay, what are the forces acting on this piston? Well, we have the atmospheric pressure pushing down on it. We have the uh, weight, and we have the pressure of argon, put it that way. Okay, if this is in equilibrium, that means that the resulting forces need, on the y direction anyways, needs to be zero, right? So we need to sum up all these forces and they need to be zero. So let's go ahead and say that upwards is positive, downwards is negative. We can do whatever, right? You can choose whatever. End result is going to be the same. So what is positive here is going to be argon is positive. So pressure of argon, weight is negative, minus weight, minus the atmospheric pressure. So P ATM, this needs to be equal to zero. Okay, know that we know this guy, 95 kilopascals. This guy we don't know, but we can find out because we have the, um, excuse me, we have the, the, the mass and the, um, the surface area, cross-sectional area, right? Now, last thing to know is that these are, you know, forces, right? These are forces. Looking at free the biodiagram, and these are all forces. We can't really sum up these guys or subtract these guys if they're not all in the same units, right? So if one is pressure, the other one is force, then we can't do anything. So we have two options here. First option is to convert this guy into a pressure. So we take the force, right? The, um, the mass times acceleration of um, gravity, and we divide by the cross-sectional area. That's one option. Or the other option is we can convert 
these two guys into forces, right? So it's the other way around. We take these as pressures and we multiply by the cross-sectional area, and then we get the forces acting on it, right? So what we can do is have them in different units. What do you think is easier? It's your call, whatever works best. I'm going to go ahead and do this one here because then it's only one math to do instead of two, right? So if we want to find out what's the pressure of argon, or argon, about the A there, pressure of argon, then pressure of argon will be equal to the weight of the piston divided by the cross-sectional area plus the weight of, or the pressure of the atmosphere, right? So in this case here, what is the weight? Well, it's going to be mass times uh, gravity. Mass is 40 kilograms, right? 40 kilograms. Acceleration of gravity, they tell us it's 9.79, is that right? 9.79 is right, and that is meters per second squared. If you multiply kilograms per meters per second squared, according to, according to Newton's second law, that's going to give us Newtons, right? It's going to give us a force Newtons. And then if we divide that by an area, in this case we have 0, 0.025 meters squared, we're going to get a pressure in Pascals. Watch out though, right? In Pascals, not in kilopascals. And then over here, we have 95, and this is in kilopascals. So yet, once again, we cannot sum these guys up, right? We cannot do that because they're in different units. Over here we have newtons divided by meters squared, that's going to be in pascals, and over here we have kilopascals, not pascals, but kilopascals. So what I'm going to do is, you can choose again, you have the option obviously of you know, converting this into pascals, multiplying by a thousand, or converting this guy into kilopascals divided by a thousand. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, if I want in kilopascals, I know that one kilopascals is the same as a thousand Pascals. Okay, so that means that you know my units that would conjure Pascals, I can cancel with that, and I'm going to have my answer in kilopascals. And then we're going to get um, sum this guy up. We're going to get that this fella here is fifteen point six six four kilopascals. So therefore, the pressure, the pressure of the argon that's pushing up on our system is approximately 110.7 kilopascals. Okay, and that's going to be our answer right there. So again, a simple problem. I said no, you know, big tricks here. What needs to be understood is that arg is going to fight back all the way until there's an equilibrium. When there's an equilibrium, that means the sum of forces is zero. And I guess this is probably the trickiest part here. When you come up with this idea, you just need to ensure Either you're only dealing with pressures or you're only dealing with forces. If you don't, we're going to have a mismatch of units there. I'm not going to be able to, you know, go from this point to this point correctly, right? And then obviously the last um, thing to watch out for is this mismatch of units here, the kilopascals and the pascals. Okay, as per usual, if you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section. And if this video helped you out, consider liking it. And we'll talk soon.